Hey folks, today we're here to check out the new X-T5 from Fujifilm. Thanks to B&H Photo for sending this one out. I know I'm a little late to the party, but I am really excited by this camera. I love the classic styling of the X-T line. We tested out the X-2H not too long ago. I did miss the styling on that one, but a really well-rounded out camera. This guy now inherits the same 40 megapixel APS-C sensor, the same processor, and apparently the same autofocus system, although I'm not seeing quite the same results. Spoiler alert, but we'll get into that. It's not, however, at the same level in some other ways. This, the XT range used to be kind of considered the flagship for stills, X Pro being kind of a off to the side range. But I think actually the X2H is probably a more rounded out still system in 2023. That said, I'm excited to test this out. We've got a bunch of different tests. To start off, let's do some dramatic dance and movement and see how the tracking and buffer is doing. Okay, just getting started. Damn, SD cards suck. The buffer is rubbish. So this guy is meant to improve the buffer from the X-T4 up to 119 JPEG. I don't know what they're claiming in RAW, but that was, I don't know, less than 20 before it started seriously buffering. So I will switch to all JPEG here and let's see how it actually does. It's just a reality. If you're doing a 40 megapixel file and trying to offload to SD cards, it's going to be a painful process. That's what you're with with the X-T5, unfortunately. So I've switched to all JPEG now. We're doing fast frames per second. Let's see how long until it actually starts buffering and how many we're actually getting in sharp focus as she moves away and closer from the camera. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, it's already started buffering. Hasn't totally stopped yet though, but we're getting two or three shots a second off. Okay, slowed down even more now. And now it's completely locked up. Oh, here's a few more. Locked. Just you know, throughout this time, my finger hasn't left the trigger. Yeah, so that was just a great shot there. I could see through the viewfinder, but the camera wasn't ready for it. Yep, that's all just frozen. Uh, again, great shots. All of that time was getting nothing. Okay, thank you. And let's see now how long it's gonna take to clear. Just keep rolling. Still riding, 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 done, wow, okay. I mean, that's what you get. If you're gonna have 40 megapixels and fast frames per second, but using SD cards only, it's just not going to keep up with sports. That's where something like the H series shines, having the CF Express, it's just multiple times faster and you're able to actually clear that stuff and keep working, is what it is. Okay, so something that's really nice on this one, this does have the new, uh, what's it called? Nostalgic Neg film simulation. I know a lot of Fuji shooters love the simulations. This is actually a really nice one. I think some of them are a little gimmicky, but 
you know, the classic chrome and the Nostalgia Neg are nice. X-T4 didn't have that, the X-2H did. Um, so that's nice. This is meant to have the same autofocus system as the X-2H, but I have to say, I just don't see the performance as being as good. I think it's definitely a step up from the X-T4, but not quite at that same level, which is surprising with same sensor, same processor, same autofocus system, you reasonably really should be able to expect the same results. Is what it is. So the eye autofocus, it's kind of good. It's going from, sorry to get right up close, but from a perfect box to kind of a rectangle, but then it jumps to the wide face, jumps around in the background a little bit, comes back again. I know it's backlit, but it's for 2023, it's really not that difficult a situation with a flagship lens. The eye wasn't obscured at any point. I would expect it to keep it. I'll have to check the files when I get back, but it's just the autofocus dot is jumping nose to face all over the place. And at f1.2, that makes a difference. Okay, so look, it's just not doing that great in terms of focus or in terms of buffer. I just, I do think this kind of camera should be capable of doing that kind of work. It wasn't crazy amounts of movement, but the XT series is often more for static subjects, street photography, that kind of thing. Tomorrow I was planning to go out and shoot just for myself for some street photography with one of my own cameras. I'm going to take this instead and give you my impressions shooting it on the street and we'll do a bunch of other tests as well. But I don't know that I could really recommend it for any kind of fast moving sport where you need the buffer or you need fast autofocus. It's just not where you would really want it to be. Before we wrap up here today, it's gonna, these lights should turn on soon, so we'll get some portraits there, but we'll also do some filming with this guy and show you how that does. Okay, so in terms of video capabilities, my videographer Ernest just had this on the gimbal, film that sequence that you saw. When I asked him his feedback on it, it was as simple as, I expect any modern camera to be able to focus in the daylight without hunting, this one was hunting. So he shoots with all different brands, he's not loyal to one or the other. That's kind of my experience as well. For stills, it's still hunting more than I would reasonably expect it to. We'll see how it grades. I bet it's gonna look beautiful once it's gone through the process and come up just fine. But the autofocus isn't really where you would expect it. At, uh, today, at the same time, we happen to be filming on a Z9 right now. He's filming me on a Z9 with a manual focus like a lens using a $300 adapter. And it's not hunting that much in video. So kind of putting them side by side, it is surprising. Having said all of that, We've started this video with an action test and a video test, and I don't think this camera is really for either of them. If I were gonna buy this, I wouldn't be using it for either of them. It's just what we had planned to film here today. So don't jump out of the video just yet. I still think it's creating beautiful files. I still think the XT series is a beautiful line of cameras and my favorite of the Fuji APS-C cameras. We're gonna do some more testing, take it on the streets, do some more classic tests with it. Now, I only did a little bit of street with this camera, to be fair, in a couple of different situations. I went to two different markets in the evening and in daytime. If you're doing single point, single focus, it's doing just fine. I really like the discrete form factor and the tilt up screen. You can walk around without people really noticing that you're shooting. 
but still in continuous focus and eye detect, it just wasn't really reliable. Look at the shot of the guy at the market when he had his head down, it was pretty much on his head, but actually when he looked up, it jumped off the very next frame and actually focused on the background. So obviously, you know, people think of the Fuji as being a street camera, an outdoor camera. Here, <laughs> putting just a little pocket wizard trigger on it, it's kind of dwarfed by it. But there's no reason that you can't use them for studio. And if you're going to be a Fuji X photographer and you're not going up to the GFX system, you're likely to be using one of these cameras for your studio work. So I thought it's worth just grabbing a few shots here as well. So I've got Felicia and I thought we would just do some headshots so we can see what this sensor is capable of when we're keeping the ISO at the lowest setting. I'll get a couple of shots with the 18 to 55 and we'll also use the 56 mil. Just some tight headshots, you can download them, links below. So I just noticed on some of the shots there, I was getting a little bit of banding. The camera's sync speed is 1 to 50th, but when you're using manual flashes, sorry, manual triggers, there is a tiny delay between this one sending a pulse to that one to discharging the flash. So you'll never get the exact 1 to 50th. You might get like a 1 to 40th or something. But uh, for this, I'm actually just gonna drop it back to make sure that we're not near that border. It's not necessarily a big deal. I mean, it is nice to have faster sync speeds. You have better control over the ambient, but Fuji has always kind of been behind in that regard. It's kind of a catch-22 or two sides of the same coin. My first impression is that I actually prefer a bigger camera shooting in studio. You're not lugging it around all day, so the weight isn't an issue. Here, you know, I can just fit three fingers on here. I can't get a full grip on it. Big dials, big buttons, everything gets a little bit easier. So in that sense, this wouldn't be my kind of preference for a studio camera. But having said that, I was just shooting with a much bigger mirrorless camera with a gigantic lens. And the fact that I don't need to worry about a strap and it, it is lighter, it does actually in a way make the shooting process a little bit easier. Still with big hands in any situation, I think the buttons and stuff could be a little bit of an issue. It's probably actually less so in studio because you have that extra time. If you're out shooting motorsports or something and trying to quickly access everything, then you're more likely to be bumping stuff. But here just doing headshots, no problem, even if you have big sausage fists like me. Okay, I'm still gonna keep this nice and simple, but whilst I have the 56 mil lens, how can I not get some shots, show you what it's capable of. Um, I have to say the white balance seemed a little bit all over the place when I was shooting just now. So I have used a, you know, a marker that will get my highlights, shadows, and a white balance for me so that we can make sure we have that correct in post. Next up, let's head out to shoot with a couple of fitness models, Jason and Coco. Now, I actually shot this just before Christmas, which explains the ripped Santa Claus themed photo shoot. They actually went on to a competition the following week and Jason won the best in Hong Kong. So big congratulations to him. Let's round this out with one more static test and some more portraits with Felicia. So, with this video is turning out to be a little bit of a monster. We already shot with Felicia in studio. I wanted to get some more. We have this great hotel room for the day. So we're just gonna run through a bunch of different looks. I still only have the 18 to 55 and the 56 mil. 
We've covered action, we've covered, you know, well-lit studio stuff. Now we're going for environmental type portraits, get a bunch of different outfits to just get some different sample files that you can download. I really have to say, in this environment, the autofocus had better be working because this is simple, this is easier than street. If it turns out that we're missing the eye in this kind of a scenario, then I really think that there is some issue with this and I'd even have to question whether I got a lemon somehow because the performance just hasn't been what I would expect from a Fuji or for any camera at this price point in 2023. So let's start off with some different shots here, see how it does. Okay, I really have to question whether I got a lemon, but I don't think I did because in some situations it's doing fine or if serious firmware updates are required. Like I said, in some ways it's doing better than an X-T4 and doing fine, but there's other times where just this level of hunting for focus really isn't acceptable anymore. It sees the eye, but it's still pulsing back and forward and as soon as her head moves, even with the eyes still clearly visible to the camera, it just loses focus. I'm at a really comfortable working distance here, not too far, not too close, within its easy range of focus, and it's unreliable. I would expect any entry-level mirrorless camera to do better than this in terms of eye autofocus these days. So this is Fuji. Yeah, so which do you use? XE, right? Uh, XS10. XS, okay. So XT is a higher range. Mm -hmm. This is their latest one. Mm -hmm. I was just shooting you uh, the, exact, oh. wait, 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 the exact ones that I was talking about. So it has your eye, mm -hmm. it detected your face, then your face went down. And then oh, if you see, just her. it's just completely gone. Okay. So try it with me. You'll see on Ernest there, it uh -huh. will find a box. It will put the eye in. Uh -huh. But if you're taking multiple shots, See if it's staying with my eye. I mean, and you're a Fuji shooter. This isn't challenging situation, right? Yeah. I'm not hating on the camera, but I expect more from Fuji. Yeah. So the more we're shooting, it's becoming apparent the, it, the autofocus is jittery and that's an issue if you're in continuous and you know, depending on exactly when you let it fire, it may be on or it may be off with that pulsing. But the 18 to 55 is performing better than the 56 and it's not just when it's wide open, even if it's stopped down to f2 or f4, the 56 is pulsing a lot more on this camera. So with the 18 to 55, I think it's acceptable. Not outstanding though. With the 56, not acceptable.
interesting. Back on the 56 here, and it seems like it's really a face and eye detect thing because that's when you really notice the pulsing. But here, just using a zone and still continuous shooting, continuous autofocus, it actually gets the area I want and locks on and it's not jittering. If I move it to another area in the background, if there's poor contrast, it still sucks. But when there is good contrast, it just holds it. So it seems like it's a 56 plus eye autofocus issue which is a genuine issue because this is their best portrait lens. So there you go. It is what it is. There we go, third time. Okay, this video has gotten fairly long, so I don't wanna repeat myself too much. I think in summary, I love the ergonomics, I love the layout, I think the, the how they've got the buttons arranged now is just perfect with the stills and video and then the mode dial hidden in under your uh, ISO. I just love the layout of this. Personally, I don't notice that it's smaller or lighter than the X-T4, but on paper, it is a little bit. <sighs> For street, for static subjects, for the 18 to 55 general use, then I find that it's a compelling option. I still wish that it had a better media slot if you're gonna be shooting anything fast. SD just isn't really up to the job when you're dealing with 40 megapixel and fast frames per second. As a portrait photographer, so this is completely biased, it's really disappointing how the autofocus performance is on the 56 mil. It's easily my favorite lens in the Fuji X range of lenses and to have it perform so inconsistently, it's a total bummer. So great camera, but flawed. Let me know your thoughts. Check out the sample files below. We'll see you soon.